Howdy folks. Welcome again to the Chef in the Grape.com. Obviously I am still your host and I'm still Chef Christoph. Uh, we are continuing our conversation about sparkling wine because yesterday my son was baptized and um, obviously uh, proud dad want to celebrate and what better way to celebrate than with a little sparkling wine. I love sparkling wine as much if not more than the next person but champagne, let's be honest, gets a little expensive after a while. I'm just a poor journalist, uh, a chef. I cannot afford champagne uh, on a regular basis. Even the entry level ones, 40, 50 bucks a bottle. Now, I love them and I cherish them, but as something for a special occasion. So I look for options when it comes to sparkling wine. And one of the options that I look to is, uh, especially over the past few years, undeniably the quality and and the extreme value of cava. What's cava, you say? Well, here is the Conda di Haro. Cava from um, uh, Bodegas Muga, M-U-G-A. And cava is the sparkling wine of Spain, and it's made with different varietals than we're used to from Champagne. In fact, most of the sparkling wine that we're used to in the New World comes from the same varietals that are used in Champagne. We're used to Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, sometimes a little bit of Pinot Meunier thrown in there. Uh, very occasionally we'll see some other varietals, but they're, they're pretty few and far between. Um, this, the Conde di Haro from, from Bodegas Muga, is actually done method traditionnel, which we used to be able to say was method champenoise, but of course can't say that anymore because it's been trademarked by the, by the um, um, uh, wineries of Champagne. Uh, so now we say method traditional, and that's what it means. This wine is actually made in the exact same way that champagne is produced, um, but it's done so for a, a fraction of the cost in using different varietals. So we, we get some different flavors to it. This is a vintage, it's vintage 2011. We're tasting this now in October of 2015. So four years old, um, not quite on the same level as um, great champagne houses who do not release until the wines are at least five years old, but similar. And the varietals, 90% Viura and 10% Malvasia. Uh, now Malvasia is used in a great deal of Cava. Uh, Viura is not. I'm not going to get into technical aspects, but let's just say it's different than Chardonnay. Uh, but let's, uh, let's stop talking and let's actually start digging into it because this is pretty exciting stuff, let's be honest. So in the glass, you'll notice actually carries a lot of the same uh, colors as we would expect from great uh, classic champagne, right? Um, gold, um, lemon peel, uh, hints of... Um, of gold and silver in it, little flecks of gold and silver, and then on the nose, it's funny eh? because it has a lot of it has a lot of those characteristics we expect from champagne, right? There's the um, dry, toasty bread. There's the baked almonds, roasted almonds, but then there's um, there's a salinity to it. There's a, a sea salt minerality that runs underneath the peritones and everything else. And it, it smells for all the world, um, not the same, but it's sm similar to green olives. It's really quite intriguing. And then on the palate, <laughs> bone dry. Absolutely bone dry with really brisk, vibrant, tight, tense, precise, Burgundian Chablis style um, mineral driven acid. If you love Chablis, you have to seek this out. You have to, because this is Chablis quality, this is Chablis precision in a sparkling wine, and for a fraction of the price. Um, obviously, I don't know the market that you're in, but in my market, really good Chablis, um, Petit Chablis, starting 40 bucks, Premier Cru, 50, 55, Grand Cru, 80 bucks, this bottle, 22. 
Not that I don't live around Cruz Chablis, I do. Just can't afford it every day. Yeah, wow. Palette carries a lot of the things from the nose, but with so much more um, vividness to them. It gets really bright, sharp, delineated. Here's the minerality. Vroom. And uh, the, the sea salt brininess quality to it, really mixing well with that ripe pear and that lemon pith. And um, yeah, sure, maybe a little white grapefruit, but it's really on the lean, racier side of the, of the citrus tones. Even the, the lemon doesn't come through. It's really much leaner than that. Uh, that makes me want to pair this with rich white fish trout would be great. But I also can't help but think that if you did a really fatty free-range chicken in the right way, well, uh, that's a dichotomy. You don't get free-range chicken that's very fatty. You'd have to augment it with something. But um, I'm, I'm thinking uh, much like um, uh, Lean Viognier from the Rhone. You know, they might serve it with something like a poulet au quichon lai, which means chicken of the 40 garlics. Um, so you take a, a, a chicken and you poke it with your knife and you keep sticking garlic cloves in it until you've stuck it with 40 different uh, cloves of garlic and then you roast it like that. Ugh, heavenly. And I can't help but think that this would be wonderful with that, just as it would be um, with Oysters Rockefeller. Mm, there you go, perfect pairing. That chicken would have been good. Oysters Rockefeller, absolutely, 100%. 91 points. 91 plus, actually, to be honest. It's beautiful. It's eloquent. It's so indicative of the region it comes from and from great wine waking. I hope you look for this in your local market. Once again, Conde de Jaro from Bodegas Muga. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as I.